Well guys, in this video, I have a Core i7 powered mini PC that we're going to take a look at in terms of running this unit as a home server in the home lab with self-hosted workloads using Proxmox. Up until this point, most recently, I have tested a couple of Ryzen 7 based units. So this is the first Core i7 that I have tested in the mini PC form factor. So stick around as we look at this Ace Magician AD15 Core i7 based mini PC. The Ace Magician AD15 was sent to me by Ace Magic, and I have seen many of their models on Amazon and other online retailers. Now, this is not a paid review outside of the unit being sent to me, so my thoughts are certainly my own on this particular mini PC and its worthiness as a home server running Proxmox. The Ace Magician AD15 sports the Core i7 11800 h processor and it has a tdp value of 45 watts it tdps down to 35 watts as tested i installed a couple of ddr4 32 gig memory modules for a total of 64 gigs of system memory i installed proxmox 8.x as the hypervisor now one thing to note about the ad15 is unfortunately it sports the realtek network adapter now i have made many videos on many pcs with this as a topic for discussion on most of them many of the mini pcs have realtek network adapters and they are not supported with vmware vsphere so any of you that are looking for a VMware ESXi server host for the home lab, this is probably not going to be the model that you want to take a look at. Now it has loads of USB ports. It has a USB-C port, headphone jack, Bluetooth, wireless capabilities, and all of the things that you would expect from a mini PC. And to mention, it does come installed with Windows 11 Pro. Now, just a couple of interesting specs that I took a look at as I was reviewing this unit. Most recently, I had spun up a GMK Tech Nuckbox K10 with the Ryzen 7 5800U processor, and I'm running several workloads on that mini PC. And I had shared with you guys, I really was pleased with the performance of the 5800U. So how does the Core i7-11800H processor compare to the Ryzen 7 5800U? Well, according to PCMark, both of these processors uh, sport, of course, eight cores and 16 threads. So they are on par with one another there. The 5800U sports a 15 watt TDP value. So at best, the Core i7 11800H uh, by several watts there, as its typical TDP value is 48 watts. Uh, so, you know, you're going to spend more money running the 11800H processor in the home lab 24 7 by 365. Now, what about the CPU marks? Well, the Core i7 11800H processor uh, at 2.3 gigahertz has a CPU mark of 20,807, whereas the Ryzen 7 5800U processor has a CPU mark of 18,669 points on the CPU scale. Now, that is on average 10% faster than the 5800U Ryzen 7 model. So keep that in mind. This is a, a very performant CPU, and you're gonna see a very satisfactory performance running this CPU in the home lab. Again, the TDP value is higher than uh, the 15 watt range, so you're looking at the 45 watt range. But as I will share with you guys, one of the pleasing things about this processor that I found even with many virtual machines sitting idling and not really doing a whole lot of work, and the AD15 really throttled down nicely, and I saw in the neighborhood of 20 watts with multiple virtual machine workloads running. And of course, I've let you guys know in my home lab, this is much better than my legacy super micro servers, even with the Xeon Ds that are sitting at around 80 watts in the home lab. So let me share with you guys just a physical overview of the Ace Magician AD15. This is the physical unit uh, of this micro PC. 
a really a nice build. It has a uh, not a metal case, but a hard plastic molded case uh, that feels very quality. The micro PC itself does not feel cheap, so it has a quality build feel to the unit. So if we look at the front, we've got some USB ports, and also we've got a audio port, audio jack that's built into the front of the unit. So that's what uh, your IO looks like on the front. On the back, we have a USB ports. We've got HDMI ports. We have a Realtek network adapter. And one thing to note about this, this is not two and a half gig networking, which in this day and time, I feel like should be standard. Even with Realtek adapters, this really needs to be two and a half gig. And I think that would open up a lot more desirability from a home lab perspective. So keep that in mind. This is a one gig connection on this AD15. Now, one thing, I'm not sure if you guys can see this really well in the video. It has flaring that is built on the bottom side of the housing of the AD15. Now, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of this as it limits your ability to uh, lay the unit down horizontally. Like if you wanted to sit this in a server rack as a home server, the flaring on the bottom edge will not really allow you to do that. I mean, you could, but it just is not going to look very nice. Um, so it limits you to the vertical stance of the AD15. So keep that in mind. The power button is located on the top of the box. And one of the things I do like physically about this unit is the ease of getting access to your storage, to your memory. And that is done with the access after taking out two screws on the bottom of the unit. So there's literally two screws here, and then this cover pops off. Very easy. Okay, so that is the physical look and walkthrough of the Ace Magic AD15. So what about running Proxmox on this unit? What did I find with the performance of the AD15 with this Core i7-11800H processor? Well, let's take a look at Proxmox. Okay, guys, so I am logged into the AD15 that I have installed. Proxmox I've updated to 8.0.4. And as you guys can see, this Intel Core i7 processor with 64 gigs of memory has allowed me to clone up to 32 virtual machines running Ubuntu server 2204 LTS. So I've got really great results on the density of the environment installing Proxmox and running Ubuntu server 2204. Now, as I navigate to the host summary itself, as you can see, even with 32 virtual machines running, they are basically just sitting idling. Out of the 16 CPUs, as you can see, barely not even a percent of CPU time. But we can certainly generate some traffic if I open up a console session to one of these virtual machines. We can do an app get update and app get upgrade. And we'll do why. So we'll start some updates on a couple of virtual machines just to generate some load on the CPU. I'm going to log into another Ubuntu server host and let's do a Docker run daemon. Let's call this Nginx, Nginx latest. And let's run a couple of containers. So let's see if we can generate just a little bit of load. As we can see, we've, we were able to get it to bounce up to 25% CPU of those 16 CPUs. And as you guys can see, I had actually pulled out the 64 gigs of memory and I have that in the Ryzen 7 mini PC that I'm running some other workloads for my quote unquote production environment with VMware vSphere. However, as you guys can see with 16 gigs of memory and no doubt some paging going on here, swap usage as you guys can see as well, we are able to run 32 Ubuntu server virtual machines. I believe each of these are configured with, yes, one gig of memory. So definitely over provisioned here with 32 gigs of memory on this host and physically only 16 gigs or so 
of memory that is really available for workloads. Just wanted to purposely do this to show you guys just how well this little mini PC handles home lab workloads, the normal things that you guys will most likely be doing, uh, cloning virtual machines, running Docker containers, running updates on your virtual machines, so on and so forth. I've not had any issues whatsoever with this particular set of hardware. Well, so guys, what do you think about this Ace Magician AD15 Core i7 based mini PC? All in all, I really like it. I think it is a powerful mini PC for something like a home server. Now there are uh, things that I don't necessarily like about it. The housing physically prevents you from positioning this in a horizontal stance. I also think that it should have included a two and a half gig network adapter, which would have made that really nice. It would have been awesome if it would have been an Intel based i225 or i226 so we could run VMware vSphere as well as Proxmox just to have those options available. However, Proxmox installs on this beautifully. Uh, the 64 gigs of memory that I installed in it allowed me, as you guys saw in the previous walkthrough, to run in the neighborhood of 30 virtual machines. So this will truly service most home lab needs and a pair of these uh, running a Proxmox cluster would be even more powerful and allow you to do uh, even more cool things. So this is an interesting mini PC, I think from Ace Magic, the AD15. So if you're looking for an Intel based mini PC with a core i7 processor with a great deal of performance, but also a seemingly good balance of performance as well as power efficiency. The 11800, I think is a nice balance for most who want to use this as something like a home server in the home lab. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, stay safe out there, guys. Keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.